Okay, welcome to session 10. Uh, we shall be, uh, continue to finish off our uh, roof plan, uh, which is um, where we sort of um, left it off last time. Uh, over the holidays, um, uh, well, just before the holidays, I did send you an updated uh, version of the uh, instructions, which are sitting in the um, assessment task here. Uh, so you can just download those. Oh, okay. So, uh, okay, so what I've uh, updated should be in here. Uh, this one here, updated, 26th of the 9th. Uh, so you should be using that. So we downloaded. It is a, a Word document. So um, we, um, yeah, you're expected to, uh, when you upload your floor, uh, your floor plan and the roof plan, which is A01, uh, make sure you upload it and send it through with this document because we've got the check-in list down the bottom on this, and you might as well just use the most recent one if you can. Um, all right, so that's downloaded here. So we left it off at the new page number of about page 18, I think. So I'll just um, swing over to that page. Uh, because we've added a whole lot of stuff at the top, um, and this is a bit of an overview of all the pages, but for example, you know, these pen things were in, in here, um, and a few other things like that that we changed along the way. Uh, all right, so, and also um, uh, some dimensions have been updated, uh, things like that. Also, what we've updated is this one here, uh, the, uh, the first sheet, which is this one here, version 3. Again, same, that thing has been, up, this has been uploaded on that same day. And also, I think I've emailed you all that as well. But this is a little... Uh, cheat sheet as to what we we're trying to achieve. Um, as you can see here, I highlighted that because that's one of the labels I forgot to put on there in the previous one. So there wasn't much of a change on this one really, uh, and except for these dimensions, I've uh, added a few more dimensions on here, as you can see. So this this is yeah, this has been the um, major change um, on here. All right, so that's a new one to follow. Um, you might have to just delete what you put there and redo it or just add to it, however you want to do it, but just see if you can get it to, to look the same. All right, so that's the two documents we'll, we'll have here. I've got the Word document here already, so let's uh, head over to page, um, what do you say, page 18, it's 14. Uh, all right, so this is how we started creating uh, the roof. Uh, okay, so uh, going down, all right. Uh, now, uh, I think we, well, by the look of it on my one, I don't have, uh, I did switch off the, um, uh, the roof because I was actually, uh, when we were doing the hatching for the walls, I said it's better to switch off the roof so that it doesn't get in, in the way uh, when you're hatching. Now, now we need to, uh, we now uh, use the combination of hatch, and we've done that, an officer command, we've done that. Uh, to do the rafters. So we've done the previous hatching, but now we're going to use sort of a hatching, half hatching and half offsetting to create the roof layout for the rafters only. Okay. Then we're going to add the um, underpurlins and struts and all those things as a, as a block afterwards. All right. So what do we need to know? Okay. So we've got the layer rafters. Uh, the rafters we'll be using are those, although uh, this one's, I'm just reading from, let me just swing it up a bit. Page. Um, all right, so these are the rafters we'll be using, although we don't need to worry about it. It's just more for noting later. Um, the thing that you need to know is that there are 1,200 centers. That's an important bit there. Um, yeah, so speed thing, the process up, the hatch process up. Uh, we'll now turn off all layers except for the viewports, roof rafters, and roof plan. Um, yes, we need the roof plan. Uh, and the rafters, of course, and the viewport, and that's that's all we need. Uh, because then what we're going to do is just basically work off the roof plan like this. So you have the you end up with this, and then we're going to build it up, and we're going to start uh, by uh, creating the putting the rafters at the intersections of the ridges, which um, I suppose that's how what happens in real life, isn't it? They they will put the ridge up oh, and um, and and support it some you know with the end bit sort of thing or just like you see there, uh, minus this one's probably, um, and then we'll fill in the, the rest afterwards. All right, so this is uh, how we're going to do it. 
All right, so basically when I go back to AutoCAD here, now I set to turn off all layers. Let's have a look at our layer state. Uh, layer here, the properties. All right, so what we've got here. Now we're in layout. So remember, we're going to get two sets of everything. You know, the colors, the line types, and all that. Uh, line weights. Okay, so, but I said to turn off everything except for so many. Now, there's quite a few that I already turned off. Now, just wanted to um, sort of explain why we're turning them off. Uh, when I say turn off now, I mean turn off. I don't mean freeze it in the current viewport. Okay, all right. Uh, I mean turn off now uh, because this is a little technique we're using. Just so. Uh, so it makes it clearer while we're drawing the roof, but then uh, for printing purposes, all their layers are normally on. So if I went through and just perhaps in that current viewport frozen all of those, um, then I wouldn't know which ones to unfreeze and which ones to leave frozen to construct my my roof. Uh, so uh, I think at this this at this stage uh, we've got. Yeah, for example, at this point we've got here, let's have a look. If I go into that viewport, it's a bit hard to see on here, I'm just sure. um, see what we've done so far in this viewport. If I go in here, in this viewport, I might be able to see it better from here in this case. Uh, we have frozen the doors in the current viewport, for example, see that? Uh, we have frozen the floor hatch, the floor outline, joinery, it's quite a few things that we've frozen to construct that roof. Um, plan as such. Now, if I, you know, if we went along and said, uh, I just told you now, turn everything off except for basically the roof uh, uh, plan, uh, and you went through and frozen it through here, then when I said to you, well, now construct the the roof, you're going to go have to go through and and freeze in that current layer, or make sure you don't. Thaw the doors, you don't thaw the windows, you don't thaw the floor hatch. Right? It's pretty hard. So, what we're saying is leave that as it is. We've already got it formatted pretty much how we want it. I just turn them all off. And then, when we're ready to um, see what our roof plan should look like, we're just going to turn everything on and, and all the layouts will look okay. So, it's a bit of a technique, I suppose, um, a bit of a trick. Um, Okay, so all right, so we're gonna. Uh, so in addition to that, now we need to turn off uh, a few others. We said now title block. It doesn't really matter if we, you know title block can stay on. Really, it's not going to interfere. Everything in paper space won't really interfere. Um, wall openings, yes, they should go off. Uh, wall shade should go off. So it's a, oh yeah, it says okay. That's your. Your current layer, do you want to turn it off? Yes, turn it off because I'm going to make um, rafters my current layer soon. Uh, War timber should be off. All right, so there's quite a few. Viewports should, should stay on. Really, pretty much I think I'm, I'm right. All, all I've got to do is just turn on the, the roof plan and make sure I make my rafters current, roof rafters here, this one, turn it on for a start and then make a current. So just double click it, or you can put a little tick up here, there's a little tick there, and um, that will fix it. So never mind what you're looking at on the left hand side, because because we turned a whole lot of stuff off, left hand side won't look right at this point, but uh, we're not worried about that. So this is the this is what we, we actually need. Now current layer is the roof rafters. Um, out of interest, what is the uh, line weight for our roof here? Uh, the roof plan. Uh, well, that's interesting. Okay, see how it's showing its, it's color eight and center center. Well, uh, that's because I'm not in the viewport. So if I go into the viewport, it says okay. Normally it should be color eight, and normally it should be a center uh, line type. But for the viewport, we change it so it's magenta, and it says 0.25 is the thickness instead of point, uh, 0.13. And it's also continuous, so we changed it for that viewport, so it looks different for our roof plan. All right. Now the rafters are what? 0.7. They're really, really thick, aren't they? <laughs> See how that looks. Is it meant to be that? Let's have. A, let's go back to our um, cheat sheet. This one here. Um, I don't believe they. Why are they that thick? 
Yeah, that's quite thick. I don't believe they should be that thick. This looks to me more like a, in fact, this thing here is more like a point, possibly point 0.5, the outline. Um, and uh, this might be, you know, point 0.25 or point 0.35. Uh, I have to go back and double check what we said that should be because um, um, that that line weight doesn't look right to me. Um, let's go with the roof plan. Let's just change it for now so it's a bit thicker. So let's make it point 0.5. Uh, I reckon. Let's have a look. Um, and and the rafters, uh, they're quite thick at 0.7. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, 0.7 or 0.18 here. Uh, overall, I'm not sure how we ended up with that color. Uh, ah, because it's white. Um, and I think the original ABS thing was, uh, yeah, that was a mistake I picked up from probably um, a little while ago. Um, for some reason in the in the template they made the rafters uh, 0.7 and I think that's a little too thick. Let's go 0.35 uh, for everything for those rafters for both uh, for now and if we need to adjust it later we know how to do it. But I think that would be a better combination perhaps I'm thinking. Uh, yeah okay we just confirmed the sizes for those <coughs> those pins. Um, so the for the rafters, it should be 0 0.25. Um, yeah, so here. Uh, so the rafters, roof rafters, should be 0 0.25 in the current viewport there. So we'll just make it more 0 0.25 uh, because the rafters are not showing up in any other viewport anyway. So let's just make them globally 0 0.25. Um, and the actual roof plan itself should be. Uh, point 0.5, which is correct, uh, that would have set that up as all right. All right, so let's have a look at um, how we're going to go about doing this. As I said, we're going to use the rafter layer, which we have ready, and just basically going to uh, segregate this thing and just do the little uh, mid, um, you know, the put the, um, the actual rafters in there where we need to. So let's have a look at that. So firstly, break up the plan in these sections to assist with the initial rafter locations. Uh, draw the below uh, set out rafters in layer roof rafters. So we're just basically, it's just line work. And then we're going to use the hatch command after, after that. This one here, to be honest, we could probably do it all in the hatch command. Uh, but um, I'll, I'll just draw that in for now and we'll see. Okay, so let me just, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, come out of the viewport and then I'm going to double click on the uh, out, outside of the viewport, on the perimeter of the viewport, or on the viewport, and that will take us, it will, it will viewport maximize the screen to model, and the advantage of this, we can actually see, we, I mean, even in model, it probably looks all right now because we've turned everything off, but normally you see a lot more stuff in model. Plus, this is formatted uh, the way uh, we want it with the colors and it's continuous line type. So, okay, so just draw a line, L for line, um, and just uh, click there and just go across, either perpendicular or to the midpoint of that is fine. Uh, probably having your author one doesn't, uh, would, would help, mine, mine didn't. Uh, so let's just uh, do that. All right, so just draw a few lines that are set out lines and go across perpendicular there. And, and I'm just doing the enter uh, spacebar to enter, which repeats the last command, so I don't have to type line again. So we, we, we did those three lines, I'm just going to do this, these ones here as well, and a few others. So line command, however you want to pick it up. Right, spacebar to finish the line command, spacebar to begin it again. And that's the way we work. All right, again, this one's here. We'll put this one's in. Okay, so alpha line enter or space bar. I think this one there. Oops, oop, oop, oop. If you do too many enters, it repeats the uh, line command and starts it from where, um, you know, where the other one finished, which is not what we want. Just one enter, and then it begins it. Okay, so how are we looking? So we've got this, this. Uh, we're going to put these ones in. 
How long there? All right, so where do they go? So it goes up to there and then it comes around. Now, we've got to be careful here that it doesn't snap to anything else. Um, I'm just going to go past it and I'll trim it. And we want to put one down here. You could use the same line across, but uh, I'll use a different one. Uh, uh, line. Yeah, go past. You could extend that one down. Best practice usually says to extend that one down, except this is not be uh, best practice at this point. Um, I'm just viewing it from the point of view, also thinking of from the point of view of Revit and the fact that that's a, a separate face of the roof and I'm going to keep those sort of rafters as separate line work in case we need any adjustment that can be whether well, those shouldn't have we shouldn't have to adjust those but either way it doesn't matter if you do the continuous line or not in this instance um ooh, where are we oh, okay well, we lost it <laughs> keep going okay here we go all right so then uh, for the next one i just did offset at 1200 from there you could have gone either way you could have offset it from the left one to the right that's probably not a, a right or wrong way um yeah so all right, so um, we'll offset that 1200. This is, would have been, uh, I mean, it would be good if it was one line in this instance because then if I offset, it saves me a bit of time, okay? So, other way. Hey, we do we do know the uh, line command, so we know the break command at intersection as well. So if you ever wanted to, if it was one line, you can break it, you know, and move it uh, separately. So in that, having said that, I, I could do this, for example. Delete that. Delete that. And... Um, uh, extend ex for extend or you can go here and extend and press enter and then it just will extend to the nearest line so you don't need to worry about trimming like I had to do earlier if I left it like that now we're going to offset this O for offset enter and I'm going to put in the number 1200 this is the first thing you do and then that way that's all set um, and then we just extend it again enter there we go to that I'm just going to pause here for a minute make sure everyone is uh, at least got that much before we turn the corners around here. All right, so we'll just keep going. Um, we just got to draw this uh, line across here. Now, this is just one technique of doing stuff. There's a different way of doing it as well. Uh, you could have just offset everything, but decided not to. All right, so how's that looking there? Okay, good. All right, so um, the next thing is to look at the cheat sheet. Uh, so we've done all of that. And now we're going to, here, proceed to create the highlighted sections of the rafters manually using the offset command 1200. We're going to begin from the bottom. It doesn't matter where you begin from. So we're just going to uh, draw in, uh, offset this and that there, uh, 1200. So um, over offset 1200 and just go up there. And just before we, we get ahead of ourselves, we're going to trim this up and extend that over. Uh, so um, I'm going to hit the trim command. And I'm just going to uh, use this here as, as my trimming line. Or I could choose not to. And, and I will choose not to in this instance. I'm just going to go enter. But I have to make sure I begin from this end. That way it just gets rid of everything. And... And the other, the other reason I did that is so I can use the shift key now and this makes it into an extend command So that fixes that up for me All right, so we'll offset now this one too. We can see if we did a bigger roof especially um, That if we don't use a bit of our um, uh, Hatching it will we'll be having, having to do this trimming all the time I might as well, we'll do, might as well do the other one as well uh, so we're going to try and speed those up for the rest of them. Okay, so if we go uh, next one, we're going to go extend. I'll use extend this time. Uh, enter, enter again, uh, and just uh, that way it just finds it its way to the nearest um, entity. And and I'm going to hit, hit the shift key here to trim this back to there and there and there. All right, so now I'm just going to use the line command to go up. Now if I just take off. 
I just want to see what my settings are because I should be able to go to the intersection there. Um, let's see what I've got here. Extension is on. Okay, what else we've got off? Uh, should should have worked. It doesn't seem to want to go there. So I just go past. Draw them in. And then just draw a line that goes from the intersection here. We'll trim them up in a minute. Perpendicular. Draw this one up from the intersection. Huh? Be careful. And to there. And to there. All right. So uh, TR for trim, enter, or click trim and then press enter. And just tidy that up. Okay, so we are up to there. Okay, so now we're going to draw the remaining sections using the hatch command for speed, uh, or use the offset, which I'm not going to. Um, if using the hatch command, which we will, we're going to set it up looking like this. All right, set the origin. Uh, we need it to be associative. Um, so, and we're going to go 1200 uh, is the offset. Uh, distance uh, for that. Uh, we're going to use user defined. All right, so that's what, the, what we're going to do. 90 and 0, that will be changing that depending which direction we're going. Uh, okay, so what's it saying here? Oh, goodness me. Oh, big spawner. All right, so the remaining sections is basically this one's here, it says, um, because it drew this one here already in here. We've done all that. So all well, that is done. Oh, mine is this one, I think. No, that's done. So what have we done? Oh, that's all done. Yeah, so it's just these sections here. It says here. All right, so let's have a look at that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to try and streamline this a little bit more along this edge here and see how we go. Uh, I don't believe I should have needed to put that in, or this one. I could have done it all in the hatch command in this one, really. So I'm going to... Um, try that out now. I want to delete that actually, in fact, so I can show you another way without doing that. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to do, um, yeah, we can do this in one bit rather. Um, so that'll be, and also this can be done in one lot rather than sort of two lots. Okay, okay, so let's go hatch. Um, hatch is here. Uh, so we'll click that, and we're going to go up here and change it to user defined. And we're going to change this to 1200. That is the spacing between the lines, uh, 1200. We used this before when we did our uh, floor tiles, and we set that to be whatever, 250 floor tile. But we also with that one there, what we did, we double hatched it, so it, it became a, a cross hatch. Uh, this one, we're not going to do that. Uh, so we're just going to use that, just that technique there. Um, the horizontal ones will, will be a zero, I think. So let's um, go with that. Oop. Okay, control Z that one. Uh, this is the one we want. So that's 1200 apart. It's associative. It's not notative at all. Uh, set origin we haven't done, but if I click in here, uh, it looks about right, doesn't it? It's pretty good. Well, it's not because you can see that should be there. So we'll set the origin. Ooh, try again. Set the origin. Uh, set the origin to to here. It's asking me, oh, hang on, let me just escape. Um, just, I should be able to go on here and set the origin now to that. There you go. So that moves that there. So after I put it in, I have to just highlight the hatch and then click set origin. Uh, if I'd done it earlier, I would have been okay before I started the command. So uh, the other one, do we look at this little rafter? What do we do with that? Do we get rid of that normally? Does anyone know? Do we keep that one? It's not that big, is it? I don't know. All right, so uh, we're just wondering about this little guy here. So I'm going to measure it and see how big it is for a start. It looks very small. But look, I can't measure it because I can't get onto the hatch to measure it. Right. So I'm going to go here, options. Now, someone found it. Was it Thomas last, last time? We kept losing it. Where's my options? I'm in the middle of uh, measuring, so let um, me just do it again. OP for options. It's under drafting, wasn't it? Or not? Uh, yeah, ignore hatch objects when 
snapping. So I'm going to not ignore it by taking the tick off, and I'm going to go OK, and now I should be able to measure onto that there to there. Now that tiny piece is 195 millimeters. Get rid of it. Go on. Chuck it out. All right. Okay, that's fine. We'll check them out in a minute. Or we'll, we'll check it out now, perhaps. So it's one on the other side as well, eh? So what we're going to do with that? Remember with the array command, I think uh, we uh, the array command. Yeah, we're able to get rid of one, but with this one, control key. I thought I should be able to get rid of it, but I can't. Yeah, with the array command, you can go control key and get rid of them, but with this one here, you can't. So you're going to have to, after put in, putting it in, uh, explode it to be able to get rid of it. X for explode. And then that should still remain in the right layer. And then you can get rid of it. But it is a quick way, really. We're only just looking at a quick way of putting all of the lines in that are coming in, and they're offset and they're trimmed to the nearest line. So it's, you know, it's quicker than offsetting and, and trimming like I was trying to do before. All right, so that's so I've exploded it after, and now uh, I can get rid of it. Again, I'm going to go hatch now. All my settings should be okay. I'm going to set my origin before I start this time, and I'm also going to change my angle to be 90. Set my origin to be here, and I should be able to go in there. There you go. So they're all matching except for that little one again, eh? And here will be the same. The origin is the same. There you go, it works. So we'll escape that now and we'll just explode. Uh, here we can just X for explode or find the explode under the home tab uh, over here. Um, and this one here, X, enter. Golden rule, we press enter after we type anything in, correct? We should all know about that, that by now, of course. Uh, all right, so um, just keep hatching and setting the origin beforehand. Here's one, oh, missed it. Set the origin to there, and do the verticals, um, enter, and then uh, we've got a vertical here, we've got a horizontal here, we've got a vertical here, I'll do this vertical one here uh, to start with, then I'll come back to the other ones, do other horizontals, I might, might pick up some speed. Uh, so set the origin to there, they're in, uh, almost in, they're, they're in now. Uh, enter to get out of that, um, and then I can just change direction to zero and set my origin to that there. Disappeared. All right, here we go. Enter that. I'm just uh, entering every time so it, it comes out, so it just creates it as a separate hatch rather than all in one hatch. Now, again, it didn't hold that, so let's fix it. There we go. You have to always keep, keep checking that origin. Uh, here again, origin. Okay, we're doing well. We just have to explode this one here. Uh, let me just save this one as. Right, so I'll just keep uh, after saving. I'll just uh, explode this one here. I'll just highlight a few of them to explode. This one too that got an issue. That's about it. And just press X. Now I can get rid of these guys at the end. Delete that. All right. Okay, so that's the quantity of rafters you need and the lengths if you care to measure them all and do a little um, you know, take, take off, but um, that's fine. Uh, that's a, a roof line. Now let's have a look what's happening in, in, in uh, layout. Now, get rid of this pesky thing here. Um, of course, uh, to get out of, we're in the model space through the viewport, and you can see that because you've got this blue band around this. Uh, using this minimize viewport thing here, uh, button, you, know, you can go out of it, or you can just go to click on models tab and come back in and that will also get you out of that if you're not sure how to do it or if you can't see this button in a hurry, which I usually can't see it. All right, so here we are, we're out of it. And you can see with the little set square here. So that's, that's we know we're in paper space now. Right, so that's our roof plan sort of formatted. Um, now let's see what it looks like. Uh, on a, let's see how where we are on the sheet anyway. Uh, here on the instructions, oh, we've done all that. Um, what's going on here? There we go, 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 go. What to say? Options. Oh, there you go. This is where it talks about the measuring stuff. Um, so it does tell you here how to. 
set that up where you can measure the the hatches. Don't forget to put it back to with the tick in there afterwards because when you're measuring stuff later, you might snap onto the wrong spot and then you, especially when you're dimensioning. So I should go back and fix that ASAP. Uh, result after adding all the final sections uh, of rafters um, and turning on all the wall, uh, turning on the wall hatch layer. Uh, yeah, well, what we're going to do is actually turn everything on now uh, to see what it looks like and uh, let's go with that. So let's uh, first of all go here and just uh, control A after clicking on one of the layer names and just turning, oh, yeah, turning everything on globally uh, and then just close this off and see how we are looking. Um, well, we are looking, we're not quite looking, I can see some problem. Um, that low wall shouldn't be on, uh, so let's um, have a look at that and fix this up. This is a low low level wall here, uh, wall timber low. Uh, we should just viewport layer freeze that as well. Uh, it's not there. Um, yeah, so just double click out of there, have a look. Looking a bit better now. Yeah, we good, we good. All right, I'm um, sure about the uh, veranda. Where's the veranda gone? Uh, the front here. Don't even see the, the posts there, but um, that's okay to leave them there, I suppose. Uh, because there will be a, a, a beam in theory coming across here and, and there, so you know, in a more elaborate roof plan, probably would show that in here as well. So we'll leave the posts in there, even though they don't really show up in here. Um, and you can see here in this one, we left those little bitsies on the end. Oh, we're not, this is not even right. <laughs> uh, see that? <laughs> that's not even right. But the one we've done today is right, okay? So that one there needs adjust, adjusting. I'm not sure what's happening with their, um, this one here. Yeah, this one here is not, not correct, as you can see. So ignore this issue here. This, this will be the revision number six, or probably number four. <laughs> we'll uh, have to uh, correct that. Um, basically, just uh, the origin of the hatch, which, uh, uh, and fix these little bitsy things here. All right. Other than that, it's okay. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, add view labels in paper space um, as above, um, if you have not already done so, okay. Uh, double click on the title block and change all the information, put the drawing number, whatever you need, uh, your initials, all of that stuff, uh, basically, um, you know, just in here, uh, this was talking about, um, adding that information, you meaning your initials there, you can put, uh, myself or um, David Clothier's uh, uh, initials, uh, DC, I suppose, is it? <laughs> Whatever. Robin, Robin. Oh, yeah, yeah. David uh, is actually Robin uh, helping out, so RR is fine. Okay, so um, don't worry, we'll find you either way and mark your work. All right, so uh, let's, let's go over here and have a look at um, this. So if I just double click on here, as I was saying, oops, double click on this line work, it comes up with a dialog box and you're able to fill in the information. We've done a bit of it, I think, before, so some of you might have already filled this in ages ago. Now, I'll give you a, a little break um, and then we're, kinda, we're gonna come back and, yep, and, uh, Okay, so we have a question from the floor before we go on to a break. Um, yeah, there are rafters on here and they shouldn't have appeared. And the reason they have appeared is when we created the, the layer, um, I think we might have created it before we copied this across. Yeah, we would have, from memory. If we created it um, after this viewport was um, uh, created, um, we'll copy it across. And we used, if we used this button here to create it with, it creates it, but it creates it frozen. So we probably didn't use this button to create the layer rafters. Uh, so that's why it's showing up. And and we never frozen it um, since we created it in this viewport. Well, we have this viewport right to start with, but now we added this layer, it's not right. So we do need to go in here and fix it up. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, so we're just going to freeze that roof rafters there. If you notice, um, I 
did highlight from memory a rafter. So what I did, I, I click on here. Um, well, I didn't actually. Um, you just have to, uh, if you click on there, you can go to home and then that layer is automatically there so you can find it a bit easier. So it's another little trick rather than having to look around and find it. All right, so that's um, that's good. That should be okay now. Yeah, so then we're just going to put the annotations on after the break and, and go from, from there. All right, have a uh, five minute or so break and we'll see you soon. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move uh, back in after a 15 minute break. <laughs> so five minutes is always 15 minutes. All right, so let's, uh, mind you, we've been answering some questions in between, which is good, uh, good opportunity. Now, the thing is, um, uh, yeah, we, we didn't turn on, well, I don't think I don't remember turning this um, uh, snapping to hatches back on. So I'll just sort of put it there so we don't snap to hatches in the future. I just finished measuring, so I'm okay for now. Uh, so we're going to bring the blocks in next, I believe, uh, for for the um, roof uh, major roof members. Um, they are as part. Uh, well, they're in, they're in here in the um, under the blocks. Uh, they should be here under the blocks. If you haven't downloaded them already, you can do so. If you have a look here, we're looking for this is what's in the actual folder. But the one we're actually looking for is this uh, roof framing major members. Have a look and see if you've already got them or not. Um, I might download the folder anyway um, again. And if I just click on here to unzip it, depending on which browser you have, you might have to save it as first. But then go to the folder and have a look. So, yeah, I can. This is a guy I'm looking for. But I'll just recopy everything just in case anything new went in there. But I doubt it. And just put it, um, yeah, just control C. And then I'm just going to. Put it in my folder structure, which is, uh, in my case, it's sitting here, but yours will be a bit different. But the general folder structure should be the same from here on. Uh, block library. Oh, look at that. I haven't got much here at all. All right, so let's just put them in there. <clears throat> so now we've got the uh, roof major members there. I can go into here and just double click on this outline uh, again to take us to the uh, model space through the viewport and we'll follow on with the instructions over here okay so the instructions here okay so we've done a bit of this supposedly the instructions are well below uh, first of all I'm giving you some terminology because we're bringing in some things that we're going to annotate so it's good to know what they look like and where they sit and fit in the roof uh, so this is the best we can do apart from real pictures um, or going on site or going to have a look just across the main street here, where they uh, uh, do uh, uh, const uh, timber construction there. Uh, so do have a look around when you're on your break. But basically, we've just put in the rafters. This, this one's here are the rafters so going along the roof. And uh, now we're going to put things like under purlins, um, you know, strutting beams, struts. Um, what is the name for the strut? Are they not um, here? It's actually annotated in the second image, strut. But that's a strut. Oh, no, it's in the first one as well. Here you go. Um, all right, so you can see how that works. Oh, almost. Um, basically, we are breaking the span of the rafter so it doesn't span from the bottom of the wall here or the top plate uh, to the ridge. And so halfway through, we're putting a support to hold it up. What what does that do? Basically, that um, allows us to use a smaller size timber uh, across there uh, because it breaks the span of it. Uh, but then again, this 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 underpillion can't span all the way across from one end of the house to the next. So we every so often push struts underneath it. It's great when the strut lands on top of a wall, like this is a, a wall here, but often it's not. So then we have to put a timber that goes across the wall and sits underneath the strut to hold the strut up. So it, it goes on forever. <laughs> so, so basically this thing here is holding up this thing here, which is holding this thing here, which is holding this thing here. All right, great. You're amazed the roof is still standing, eh, after seeing all that? But yeah, it, it does work. Okay, uh, that's a quick thing about how that works. Um, all right, so there's just uh, image credits there, where I got the images from. 
And then we're going to bring the under perlins in, strutting beam struts uh, also need to be added, which we're going to do it now. Um, so this is our design. We're going to download it from Learn, which we have. Uh, make sure we are in, uh, make sure it is in layer rafters. Uh, in session point of the block is the bottom left hand corner of the roof outline, as indicated down here. All right, so that's, that's done now. So we are in layer rafters already. We're just going to go to insert and we're going to go to um, expand the insert command there. And we're going to go to more options and we're going to browse. Right, so get to that. And we're going to browse to our blocks, which in my case, yeah, it's in there. We're going to go to the, uh, what do we call it? Uh, roof major members. Yeah, that's great. Uh, but where is it? <laughs> oh, I'm in the wrong unit altogether. <laughs> so that explains it. Uh, let's go to here. Um, okay, roof. There you go. <laughs> Easy. All right, so that's Gonna, I'm going to make sure I've got a tick in here, so I'm going to specify on screen where I'm going to put it. I'm not going to change the scale or the orientation, so that can stay without a tick. I'm going to go OK and make sure it doesn't come in exploded. Probably best not to. Uh, OK that. So they reckon we'll put him about there. <clears throat> so it says here. Um, sorry. Right there. Sorry? Can hear you, sorry? Oh, okay. Let me have a look. So, yeah, we just place it here now. Uh, be careful, yes. Uh, do not um, make sure you unzip the files into your folder because you can't insert from the zip direct. And a few of you found that issue. So that's fine. That's a very common issue, but... Um, you can get stuck with that if you're not sure what to do next. So uh, th there it is in the corner there. That's, that was relatively easy. If we now go back to uh, click this button here, minimize viewport, uh, we are back there, which is uh, pretty good. All we've got to do is put these labels on next. Uh, so let's uh, do that. <clears throat> so basically, we're going to. Uh, add these nodes to the paper space, um, much like we did with the uh, viewport labels. Uh, nodes to be in the appropriate layer using the multi liter tool. Uh, let's go to our sheet and do that now. Do a print preview. That's after we put the notes in and have a look. But we'll have a quick look uh, now, make sure everything is okay before we put any notes on, just, just to make sure we just run through this here. Uh, it should look a bit like this, minus the notes, and just have a quick look at that. Uh, I'm just going to go uh, uh, up here where it says print just for a second and the quick access bar or you can go through the big A, continue. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, monochrome we said and I'm going to basically all I'm going to do is just go full preview, uh, just preview. Uh -huh. Okay, so I can see a problem. Can you see a problem? It doesn't look gray. Doesn't look gray. I can see a few issues. All right, so I'm not sure if he's saying that here, but um, oh, there you go. Yes. See, in the reframing viewport, change the wall shade color to 128. Hmm. Okay, this this is a problem that you come across whether you're using ABS or anything else. You can't really get gray using any monochrome type CTB file. All right. So how do we fix that up? Okay, so basically we're going. To, sorry. Oh yeah, we try that. Let's, let's use grayscale. See what it does. Um, so if we go preview. Uh, so grayscale. Where did you see that? Oh, grayscale. This one here. You mean? Yeah. Ah, let's try that out. But I'm not sure if that. Will work. Yeah. Nah. Nah. That won't help the other one. Okay, let's escape that one. Uh, so now we won't use. We we'll use monochrome, but. What we're going to do is go into the viewport, right, like that. Then we're going to go to the home and we'll go to the layer. And this is again another trick of the trade. 
thing. So um, it's a bit what we're doing now. It's a bit like those, uh, you know those black and white prints. And someone's holding a rose, and it's a uh, red. <laughs> All right. So we're going to just throw one bit of color in the whole black drawing. So we're going to go to um, uh, what are we doing? We're doing the war shade. Uh, war shade. This one here around there. That's interesting. It says 128, 28, but then here it says, see, for when we created it, we actually made it so it worked, but then for some reason the viewport one has gone back to color 8 because we probably went highlight everything, change everything to color 8. I'm not sure what we did. But, yeah, we've got to go and click on this number 8 here and see how it's sitting on index color and it says number 8 down there, All right? See that? All you got to do is click on the true color tab and it does the work for you. It just puts in what the equivalent of the gray is in true color. Now, CTBs work only on the index colors. Anything outside that comes out as you see it. So if I pick the pink one, it will just print out pink. All right? But I've got gray. It's not shocking them too much. Let's not make it red. <laughs> okay, let's go like that. So that's now should be okay. So if I close that, uh, double click it here and type in plot rather than clicking the print command. Uh, go preview on my monochrome. Uh, preview. There you go. Great. So look, but I can see some other problems here. Um, it's not a major problem, but I can see the wall outlines. I think they shouldn't be on, so we just have a softer sort of. They're black and sort of a little bit annoying. Uh, so maybe we got the walls turned on. So I just um, I'll apply that apply that to layout. So make sure my monochrome is there next time, and just cancel, and I'll just tweak it a little bit more. So I go to the layer again. Let's see what my wall brick is. In there, I want to have the wall brick turned off. No, wall brick is actually wall, wall brick should be turned off anyway. I'm not sure why that's not showing, uh, but let's turn that off in the viewport. In the, not off, but in the viewport only. Um, but the wall timber should be off as well, and it's not. Uh, and the wall openings should be off, but it's not. Uh, I, I probably missed a step that explains that, but I'll just double check if I haven't uh, missed it or not. But um, I think that sh should be okay now. Let's have a look. Um, if I plot now, continue with that, preview. Now, plot is another way of, of saying print. Uh, so there, it looks a bit better to me now. Oh, so it's looking a lot better. Okay, so get that right. Uh, now all you have to do is just um, yeah cancel that. I just wanted to make sure it looked all right. Just a bit of print preview. I'll add a few more notes, and we we can actually print this and submit it by next week. I think I believe. Um, uh, so just uh, checking back here uh, on our um, learning. Um, what is it? Start here. What is it? Learning program. What it's called? Learning schedule. Um, if we have a look here, we're sitting down um, where the holidays here. So back week 10. And we are continuing to finish everything off here. And next week on week uh, 11, we will start the electrical plan. Uh, but this is due on that day. So close of business on that day. We can submit, finish that off, uh, the AO1 sheet. And submit that, which uh, basically what's due, as we said, um, is the uh, you have to send off this one here, which is the uh, Word document here. But down the bottom of it, page something or other, where they start going landscape about here, uh, evidence table, you have to go through and just tick that you um, put the right abbreviations on there, you know, like this sort of thing. Um, dimensions are done, um, or the numberings of, of whatever the windows in that um, paper size is correct. Make sure you've done all of those things for um, evidence one, which is the floor plan. Also for evidence two, which is a, um, the roof framing plan, uh, which we're doing today. And you stop there, just do all that. 
and then next time you do the the you know number three and four um and then it's number five um is basically number five and tails is it's just one one thing for for both views all right um okay so what you're going to give us is this uh the pdf and the drawing file so three things you need to upload okay and then that upload should be ready to roll okay so let's go back to um what page were we again 20 something oh, oh we're here all right, so it should look like this. Let's just put some notes on um, in the reframing uh, here. I think we talk about yeah. Okay, so wall shade should be that color. Okay, so we've done that roof plan. All right, I think we're just talking about here color green. Um, okay, so this one here we should really correct it and clarify. When we mean color green, we mean 0.5 um, thickness uh, or line weight. Uh, so we should just, it doesn't have to be color green if you're using the monochrome, it's only if you're using the ABS uh, CTB, so we're using monochrome in this instance. So that should be um, 0.5, it should be reading, that's a roof plan, which we've done already. All right, so let's just uh, put some notes on here, they're not hard to put on, I'll just start, and I'll do this one here, strutting beam as per engineer's uh, design, it's just very simple noting, um, so I'm just going to do that. Mm. Uh, no, uh, good question. That that should go on the. Um, uh, there should be a text layer. Uh, this one here, text. Yeah, I think that should do us because we're going to put the text on the sheet, not inside the viewport. It shouldn't interfere with any other text we put anywhere else. Oh, okay. So we don't need to worry about turning it off. In, you know, separately, whatever goes on here, it doesn't have to be turned off. It's on the sheet ready for printing. So, uh, I mean, uh, for example, uh, because we're using the monochrome and this block came and it's got, for example, a yellow strutting beam, uh, I think it would have come in, uh, yeah, see, roof underpellens and, sorry, not strutting beam, underpellens. I could change that color to be something more suitable and it, it shouldn't make any difference. Uh, if I just check, for example, the underpellen here, uh, yeah, it's it's meant to be. Unfortunately, that's default. Uh, but we know default is 0.25. Uh, but yellow, uh, according to ABS, should be 0.35 thickness. So if I change it to 0.35, sorry, let me just change. Be careful which one you change. I'm in the viewport now. I think. Yeah, I am. Uh, or should be. Yeah, let me just double check. I might not be. No, I'm not. Uh, it doesn't matter where you go, but in the viewport there, I can go here. I can change the roof under Perlin. If you just want to be able to see it a bit clearer, uh, I could change it so it is 0.35. So we're stipulating that, 0.35. Make sure that they're both 0.35. I just pick, yeah, they are. Uh, the green ones should be 0.5. So we might as well, this is probably one of the only couple we need to change that came across, the green ones. Make them 0.5. So we're making them so they work better with our monochrome today so that's 0.5 so that means you're not restricted to those colors now you can actually change those colors to whatever is better for your eyesight okay so i could say okay well that yellow i don't really like i can't really see it maybe i'll try that color i don't know 32 um Mm, it's not much better. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> um, so, you know, you can just muck around until you find something that is better. Maybe not green. Um, that's too close to green. Maybe a blue one, for example. Yeah, blue and white is not too bad. But um, you can actually put in, um, uh, put the line weights on, you'll be able to, but it's not. Oh, there you go. If you zoom in, you can see it a bit better. I was just showing you what, you know, if you want to change things, what you can do to free yourself from those colors. Also, um, I mean, I was um, talking to industry over the holidays, and, um, you know, one of the directors, in fact, is, is colorblind. And, um, you know, he goes up to see the, the work, and, and they, you know, he can't see any reds and any whatever colors they can't see. Uh, so, um, and yellow, I think. I'm not, I can't remember, but 
uh, with this system, you, especially if you're colorblind or anyone else in your office, you, you actually can break away from that and actually set it up so you can actually see it the way you want to see it. Um, so that's another good reason for not being locked into um, something like ABS, where actually the line weight is, is determined by um, the color. Yeah. All right, so that's that. Okay, so let's go with uh, text we said. We're going to put in, uh, we're going to go to the annotate tab and we're going to use the multi leader. And uh, we're just going to, if we just copy um, where mine, oh, it's the wrong one. Okay, so if you just copy where we're, I'm, I'm pointing to these. Uh, the strutting beams under here, there's a couple of strutting beams that go across here, uh, across that wall, one there, goes across that wall. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I think that's not uh, sure what that is. I'll have a look in a minute. So a strutting beam as per engineer's design, that's all we're saying, we'll be cheating here. Um, sorry, you're right. Yep. Okay. Hey? Yeah, okay. Uh, that one has one. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, what's been picked up here is um, another issue, perhaps. Um, on, on here it says there's only one, but I'm showing two in the actual notes. So I need to correct this, and I'll show you how to put, put another one on there. That hasn't been updated, so we've got to fix that up. So that's another thing. Thank you for that. Now, be careful. I started uh, my notes, but I'm in the viewport, so that's not what I want to do. i just come out of that. Get out of the viewport, and I want to go to annotate. I want to go to my multi leader, and I want to just point to this and um, oh, take off the ortho. Yeah. All right, so I'll just type in um, strutting beams. What was it? Strutting beams? Uh, strutting beam, S per engineer's design. Uh, as per engineer's uh, design, all right, something like that. Now, have a look at this little, these two little uh, arrows here. If you click on one and drag it to the left, see how it just it gives you a bit of a paragraph, a bit like a word processor. So you can see all the the rulers at the top there. Yeah, so you can adjust it so you can get as many lines as you wish on there. Okay. However, um, you want to do it. Now, the thing is, uh, I, did, I did have two arrows. So with this thing here, you can add an, an arrow or a leader. Uh, and then I select this, and I can add it to, to there. Now, my notes are a bit ambiguous because it points about there. I try and stick it sort of a little bit lower here. Now, you might want to take off your object snaps because you don't want to lock into that intersection sort of about there so that... Uh, it's evident as to where you're pointing to. All right, so that's that there. Now notice that it's, it's right justifying it because I, you know, my arrow is, arrow is on the on the right hand side, so the notes go to the left. So it's sort of right justifying them by default. You can actually fix that up if you don't like that look. In fact, that, what I've done here, I did fix this one here, so they're all left justified. Um, now you can do that by clicking on there, I believe. Let's have a look. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing it. There, see, I clicked on the note which highlights the whole thing. Um, let's see if I go to here and go to in the properties and uh, go left. See that? So just went under justify, go left, and does that. So highlight that, then go to your properties under text, uh, justify left. It's one way of doing it. That seems to be okay. Yeah. All right, but the rest should be okay. Um, now, the other thing is, look, I've got plenty of space over here, but I might not have plenty of space um, on this one here. So um, it looks like I've put this viewport too far to the right. So I can actually uh, highlight the viewport, but then I have to highlight the text as well. So I might as well just do a window over the whole thing and just uh, use the move command. Um, now, be careful, if you use the move, move command, you've got to make sure you stay horizontal so the whole thing lines up still, like, you know, the, the walls lining up to the other plan. Uh, so that's not too hard. Uh, or you can nudge it, control key and arrow left. You can just nudge it by. It's not thing we need to move accurately here. It's just so we've got enough room around it. 
All right, so just keep going and putting those notes on. Um, what are we using? Uh, under Perlin and Esper Engineers Design. So um, pretty much as per Engineers Design everything. You pretty much, um, you know, cut and paste. Uh, or, sorry, uh, uh, copy. Um, so I'm going to uh, control C that one and see if I can reuse it. Uh, so if I go with a then uh, annotate multi leader and the next one is under Perlin as per engineer. So the under Perlins are this one across here and this one across here. So there's the blue ones, the under Perlins. So I'm going to start with this one. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> under per under Perlin. Like that, I reckon. And again, I have to use this thing here to fix it. Mm, yeah, we squeezed it in. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so that, that worked. And now I've just got to add another arrow for the other one. And just click on that and then add for this one here, perhaps. Done. And I've taken my object snaps off, by the way. It's easier to work with noting like this because it's just sort of got to point it approximately to the area. Um, now we're going to line the rest of them up somehow. Let's see how we go with that. Uh, Revit does it for you quite nicely. Uh, now this one's a strut as per engineer's design. You just have to point to a couple of them. Um, how are we going to do that? Well, you can eyeball it, I suppose. So if I see how I got my crosshair all the way up, this is another advantage here. I'm just going to eyeball that in for now and see how we go. Um, okay, I just drag that across. Oh, that's a good point. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? <laughs> <It's just too laughs> now I'm in trouble. <laughs> so I didn't get to that. Um, yes, um, good point. Uh, that is two, actually, but uh, that's uh, the actual... Um, should be two and a half, I reckon. Uh, what we've used in here is two millimeters. The standard does actually stipulate that everything should be two and a half minimum. We have used two here. Um, and sometimes I'm pretty sure we use two in here. Um, yeah, we have, we'll just check that because we've got a, a cheat sheet about that text. Hang on. All right, so here's the hierarchy of the text that we're giving you. So yeah, two mil is fine. If yours is locked into something else, I'll, I'll come and have a look and I'll explain. I think I don't know why. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is the um, uh, two the hierarchy two mil. Now the standard, as I said before, does talk about two and a half mil being the minimum. All right, uh, we sort of inherited this um, from bygone era, but the and, and I would say the rooms three and a half would be better as well. But <clears throat> it doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned. Not that I'm discounting standards, but I also go back and and think why standards were written and when were they written and why they were written, and they were written a lot around hand drafting. And back in the days when we had microfilming and photo, you know, reducing stuff, so things had to be very clear. Uh, with the printers nowadays, you could there would be no problem in someone reading that. Um, so I don't have a problem with that. And in fact, industry do do that. Uh, plans are getting very crowded nowadays. Everyone's going to A3, so they're trying to find ways of of reducing stuff. The only people that sticking to that standard at this point are uh, the um, surveyors that do cadaster work that submit to LTO and they're very stringent and they have to stick to. In fact, there's I think three and a half millimeters is the smallest. Uh, 0.35 is the smallest uh, line weight, not even 0.25 line weight. But the the text can go to two and a half. Anyway, uh, this is the hierarchy we're giving you. So let's stick to two mil. Now, how you get to two mil at this point uh, is this. Uh, if I go to this file here, all right. So what I did. Uh, if I go to annotate, be careful. I clicked that, I click multi leader. All right, so uh, by doing that, it says my, it's, it's a general multi leader style. Now, what does that use? That's a good question. You have to go into the standards to work out, into the um, um, settings, <laughs> the little down arrow, and see what the general is using. 
if I go modify, okay, he's using that. Um, the arrowhead is three millimeters, it says. Uh, leader structure is that. Annotative uh, content. Okay, it's using the ABS style, and the text height is locked in at two millimeters by default. So that's how I'm getting two millimeters, right? Now, I want to see your problems that you have there, uh, and I'll understand better as to where you might not be working. Oh, you fixed the problem? Yeah. What was the problem? Right, so what uh, we have found the problem has been um, is that we weren't using the uh, uh, this here, the, the, the multi-leader, but rather we had a mixture of using M text, single line text, and also using the uh, just just uh, the arrow that comes with the um, dimension style. Um, and I'm not sure how you ended up using that, but there is a command called leader, uh, which I use, LE for leader, uh, while we're talking about it. Um, and it, it's, it's um, the full command is Q leader. And, um, and if I just click on here and um, draw an arrow like this, it's a little bit more cumbersome in the way it works. Um, then you have to make that horizontal, then you have to give it the width, and then you can type something like um, something in here. Oh, then you have to, sorry, then you have to go enter to go into M text. Uh, where am I? Um, and, and you can see my text is probably too big, and I don't know where it is at this point. <laughs> so things have gone wrong here, I'm not sure, but normally, um, yeah, normally I can see my text. So that's why I don't use it. But the arrowhead, as you can see, it's pretty much the same as the other one. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's over here somewhere. <laughs> it's, yeah, forget about that one. But LE is a, a, another command you can use, and that uses the arrowhead that comes with your dimension style. But this one here is independent of all the uh, dimensions. Okay. So anyway, continue on, and, um, and now with the see with the Q leader, sorry, with the um, multi leader, you can add more of these easily. Not that you can't do it with the other one. Of course, you can just go LE and just Draw something from here to there, um, you know, and just put it on the end, end point of that, and, and there you have it. But um, this one is sort of a bit neater, I suppose. Uh, if I click here, I take my also off, and just annotate a couple more of those. So you can, it allows you to do more than one at a time, which is handy. And there you go. So that's done. Uh, so not much more to do uh, for the rest of the day. Maybe continue and just add those on. Uh, well, the other thing we need to do is this thing here, the, the label. So I might just jump to that for now. Uh, all I'll do is just copy this one here. So just CO for copy uh, or whatever way you want to find, find copy up here. Could have typed it in. Um, and just put ortho back on, F8. And I'm, I'm just sort of eyeballing it underneath. Um, there somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where I put it over here, but um, where's my cheat sheet? This one here. Uh, it's not even in the right spot. <laughs> that should be more underneath the floor plan, so that's another problem there. But anyhow, um, yeah, that should be over a bit. So this is the one. Uh, so this is a roof framing plan, is it? Roof framing plan, one is to 100, okay. Roof framing plan, so all I've got to do is just change this one here to uh, caps, roof framing plan, and I'll just make this a bit bigger so it's on one line, and that's done. That's easy. Um, okay, so just continue on with this, uh, more of these, uh, annotate, Multi leader. What's the next one? Uh, rough does is per engineer's design. Ridge. I think there's two more, isn't it? That's about it. All right, rough does are next. Uh, so we just uh, uh, pick up a rafter. Take off the ortho. Okay, now I'll just eyeball it so the intersection is there. And we can just fix this up. Beautiful. And just 
uh, escape that. Click, uh, well, add a leader. Click that. I don't know how many. Doesn't matter. Let's do a couple of them like that. All right. So that's that. And then we've got a ridge over here, and we've got a ridge over there. So we'll just ridge just per engineer's design. Probably the last one to do. Uh, so ridge this one here. I pull it over here. Ridge, and just drag that across. There, maybe, maybe there, and click that out. Escape, and just then go add. You can also remove these leaders, eh? It's a remove option, eh? uh, And then that's the last one. It's a ridge. Where's my ridge? Here. Be careful, it doesn't cross over this arrow. So we have to squeeze it past. That's going to be a bit messy there, isn't it? So uh, I will just squeeze it past, to be honest. Uh, but what I'm going to do, and it's a bit, that's a bit not that nice either. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is um, see if I can uh, remove uh, a leader from here. Oops. Okay. Uh, so rough this, this one here. Yeah, no, that's that's what I'm saying. This is not is not the best. So I think what I'm going to do is customize this a bit. So what I'm going to do is actually remove this. I'm just going to uh, remove leader. Um, that one, uh, and probably just remove all of them. Uh, what I might do is actually go leader. All right, and just. Um, so you can have an option where you can put more than, yeah, this one would be okay if you went like that, wouldn't it? Hardly see. Oh, that's not the ridge though. The ridge is up here. So if I go early, let me just try that little trick here. Okay, so what I did then, I used that other command called Ellie. Which, and then I escape. I'm not going to. I'm not going to draw any more text. The text is already there. And then I'm going to use le again. Otherwise, I have to change the settings of this to do allow me to do more than one line length. I have to create a new style. Hardly worth my hassle. And I'm going to use this. Um, and I can. Well, that might be a bit better if I go to the endpoint of that. Enter. That might be a bit better. I could have gone straight up and across uh, on an angular bit. I could have done that. But yeah, you could. I think another option would have been to go. Like that. Delete that. So. Again, here you can. You can uh, get pedantic and move that back so it lines up with that top there. All right. So, sorry? Is it time consuming? Yes, we have, um, yeah, it is uh, time consuming. Um, this is the problem here, yeah, but, but it's not too bad. We, we're sort of done. I'm pretty sure this is pretty right now. You can just save it and we'll just go to plot. Uh, plot. Uh, continue there. So this is what we have to hand up. Yeah, or well, this drawing, yes. You have to hand up this drawing, and when you uh, do your PDF, uh, also you hand up PDF, and also you hand up this here with all the stuff filled out at the bottom here. Yep. Yeah, all of that stuff we talked about before in here. Tick, 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 and I'll and then I'll be putting comments. Um, you know, over here, if I find any issues, uh, get back to you. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, so that preview looks okay. So what I'm going to do is just uh, uh, right click and plot. Does it look alright to you? Final check. <laughs> anyway, assuming that's okay, I'm going to plot it, and I'm going to put it in a location that I can find it later. 
And now that location is this, isn't it, guys? Um, under your uh, thing here is sh under sheets. And um, yeah, there, then uh, you can just call it um, uh, that there. It'll be, uh, yeah, you could have really named this layout, but we didn't. Um, it would have come up as A01 or something like that. Uh, you can leave, you know, you can leave the rest of it there if you want. But this is A01. So 01. Okay. So it's A01. Or we can call it sheet A01, whatever. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but yeah, make sure it's in the sheets section here. All right, so that's A01. Save that. It comes up. So it looks like that. Um, all the layer information comes across uh, here, I would imagine. Where's my layers? Um, layers, here, yeah, this one here. So all the layers come across as well. So someone you're giving this to, they can easily turn things off if they don't want to see some text, for example. Don't want to see the strutting beams, all right? Or whatever. All right, so that's that's basically it. Any questions? Got five minutes. <laughs> okay, I'll just pause it. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I got carried away with my arrows and I didn't do this one right. Um, so I'm not allowed to go home yet. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> picked up the um, uh, strutting, uh, sorry, the strutting, the underperlin, I think, um, as a ridge beam, but it's not a ridge beam at all. That one's a ridge beam, yes. This one is not. So yeah, this arrow is wrong. Uh, delete that. So I use LE again and I can maybe tailor it so it goes. Uh, more like this uh, across here and maybe to the end point there because uh, I turned off my object snaps you can either type it in or just click it so that's that's a better option <laughs> for a ridge beam I'll just check yours um, okay so basically finished uh, the lecture today and we waiting for you to submit yeah just get it in by next, uh, next tuesday, tuesday by the end of the lesson sort of thing tuesday. yeah and it'll be right and then i'll be busy marking it after that <laughs> good, good excellent we're doing well thank you guys